Hi there, dear friends, and welcome to a fall day in November in my tiny little kitchen garden here at Oak Hill Cottage Garden in South of Sweden. I am Sarah and I am actually a bit surprised because it was very warm inside my little cottage and now when I go outdoors it's very cold and it's raining and I didn't notice the rain when I was sitting inside. So it's been a while since I last did a live stream at Sarah's Kitchen Garden. Hi Anna! <laughs> uh, so I wanted to give you a short update before I go get what I am looking for for today's lunch. My god it's cold! It's not freezing uh, but um, I have been sitting in, um, in a nice chair, very comfortable writing for a few hours. I am actually writing on my next book uh, so and you know it's always a bit cold then when you go out. Uh, in Sweden it is uh, lunchtime by now. It's uh, 12 o'clock I think and I used to eat by then so today I am going to fry a cheese. It's like a halloumi but uh, a Swedish version, we call it like a fire cheese. It's meant for, oh my God, you see me shaking? <laughs> now the camera's shaking. Uh, so I'm going to fry it in a pan and eat with uh, some fresh vegetables. And I also have uh, some fermented beetroots uh, in my fridge. So I'm going to have a nice, uh, like adult lunch, <laughs> the kind of things you can't eat when, uh, when I have lunch with my kids and I, I really appreciate it a lot. We have had quite some um, busy weeks, uh, me and my family. As uh, in the rest of the world, we have this uh, coronavirus to deal with. My husband have been sick. Um, I didn't get any symptoms at all, so I I suppose I didn't got it, but I'm not sure. But what we see right now is that it sort of affects our everyday life in, in so many different ways. Uh, we just got a message yesterday that my husband is going to work. Um, he is a teacher, um, a psychosynthesis <laughs> teacher. Uh, so he's going to have to go to Stockholm for this weekend. So I can't work as um, I usually do this week. I have to take care of the kids, etc. And um, we go, we get emails uh, now and um, every day from the kids' school saying that they are running out of teachers. Uh, teachers are sick and kids are sick, etc. And we hope that our very small local school here it is actually just right behind me in that direction where I have uh, two kids that they will be all right just because it is such a small school. Um, ah, it's a lovely smell in here, out here. I don't know if you notice it, but there is a fire going on. You see smoke from the chimney, maybe. All right, so before we go to the, uh, the corn salads that I'm going to harvest, I just give you a short update from the garden and as you may know by now this is my my small garden a tiny garden based on a hill in our very little village <laughs> in south of Sweden it is raining might get some um, drops on the camera while turning but uh, recently uh, I cut down all the flowers in this little border that I made um, in spring. It looks very empty and not so very well organized, but I am so much looking forward to the next step. Um, I am going to get, um, oh, what do you call it, uh, silage from my neighbors. I'm going to cover this bed with silage um, as a part of my mulch. 
Before that I use uh, plant material from other parts of this garden to cover the bed. I have a video going on showing you how I made this bed and actually blog post too. So I simply covered the ground uh, without digging um, or doing anything special. So what you see under here is actually the, the lawn, um, the farmer lawn. <laughs> so I simply covered it with uh, some cardboard and then grass clippings and horse manure on top. And I have been growing in that kind of material and this summer, lots and lots of summer flowers. So this bed was created to be a cut flower border. I am not planning on any trees in this garden except the, I think you call it columnar trees. I can show you when we arrive to that part. Uh, in here I have um, removed a lot of plant materials in this bed too. It looks kind of empty. <laughs> I actually saw when I made a small tour for myself in the garden when I just arrived this morning that I still have a few like summer flowers. A lot of traffic here right now. Actually, my neighbor is going to bring the silage, <laughs> but I, as I said, I noticed a few summer flowers that are still <laughs> amazing. I think I'm going to cut a few of them to make something nice. But here you can see I removed all the plants. And... Um, My Brit. Hi My Brit. My Brit has a, a, an own garden blog and I hope you don't mind saying it but My Brit is quite an old lady starting a garden blog to share her garden projects uh, with the rest of us. I, I think it's really amazing with an, from a nice uh, little cottage uh, in Sweden uh, and My Brit you may post your a link to your blog so that other people can, can read it too in the comment sections. Right, so I uh, simply removed the plant materials and moved it to the other bed um, over there as a part of the mulch. And in here I am going to place a lot of silage too. It's still cold! <laughs> All right, so this is the tiny little garden. Uh, the garden beds uh, close to the camera are ones that I made last year. I still have lots of carrots and well every now and then when I am here working I try to harvest uh, carrots and bring home to the family uh, and these are sowings that I made in, uh, in July. Here is a leftover with slugs in it, <laughs> but otherwise they they look um, they look kind of good. And uh, yeah, they look very good in July, and you see the color fits perfectly well in my sweater. <laughs> Um, we are preparing for sarahbackmore.com, my garden blog, uh, web shop, uh, because people have been very interested in my knitting projects. So I am also a knitter uh, and um, you can see some of the projects at my Instagram. But people have asked me uh, for like patterns and descriptions uh, of the things that I do. So we are now working on a web shop at sarahbackman.com with the patterns for like uh, uh, knitted hats and uh, yeah, things. <laughs> I will let you know when it's 
finished uh, there are a few things you know with the payments you have to be very careful and uh, yeah do a lot of things mm. I am now going to this part of the garden that I made this year and it is actually quite amazing um, to be in Sweden and to have such a green garden. This is, um, this is the tiny garden and, and I should have, if I was more well prepared, even more vegetables. But this year I have had quite a few things to deal with. So this is what I could come up with. Yes, we remind Maybrit. Maybrit, kan du dela en länk i kommentarsfältet till din blogg? I might uh, share a link to her blog afterwards. Uh, we'll try to, to do that. And the blog is in Sweden, of, is Swedish, of course. All right, so this is the corn salad. And corn salad is one of my favorite vegetables to harvest late in the season. And we actually talked a bit about the corn salad a while ago. Uh, can't remember when it was, but <laughs> I, I, I think I repeat myself all the time when talking about it. Uh, but it is actually one of the absolute best vegetables to grow in a cold climate to harvest late in the season. And I, I can't talk enough about it. Uh, I think so. Um, I hope you don't mind. Um, this is a, a common vegetable to buy in Swedish supermarkets and you will find them in a small plastic bag. Uh, it is imported, um, transported from other parts of the world, um, the Mediterranean areas like Italy for example and Spain, um, transported to Sweden or Norway or Finland or wherever. Um, and we buy it. <laughs> I think uh, 70 grams of uh, corn salad in a package costs almost the same as a seed packets, uh, package with seeds that will cover the whole season for a family like mine. So it is ridiculous actually to, to buy this vegetable, uh, not growing it uh, yourself in, in this kind of climate. And why I say in this kind of climate is because this is a very cold, hardy uh, vegetable. It, it doesn't look that way. <laughs> it looks very, very like vulnerable and uh, the leaves are not very thick or anything, but it, it will stand the whole winter in this ground, if not something very unpredictable <laughs> happens, of course. And this is a mulched bed where I grew um, broccoli this year. So when the broccoli was finished, I simply put a layer of um, compost on top and I spread out, I think it was like one seed package with seeds to corn salad. Um, sometimes it is also called lamb's lettuce. I'm sorry if, if the camera is shaking, it is very cold. Uh, and I was not really prepared for this cold. Um, I have told myself uh, for a couple of days now, uh, when I have been here at work that uh, I, I, I can't forget to, to harvest and, and bring home to the family today, but I, I have forgotten. Uh, so this is how it looks like. One plant of corn salad. And as you see, this is a tiny little bed, but it is filled with hundreds and hundreds of small plants and they grow quite tight. I sprinkle the seeds so I don't sow the seeds in rows. Uh, most time when you read at the, the, like the description on the seeds package, uh, it says that they should be planted in rows. Another vehicle. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is actually the, like the main road through our village. Um, it's not very suitable if you are like me, an influencer, wanting to do garden videos, etc. Uh, but it is uh, very good for me because the people who want to come and see my garden, they can park by the church and actually go down by the road to see the garden. And in that way, I can sort of influence uh, in real <laughs> uh, to show people what I do. And I really think that's amazing. Right. So what I do is that I, I sort of sprinkle the seeds, not sowing them in rows. When you read uh, the description on how to sow this corn salad, it is often said that you should plant them with like 10 centimeters um, apart. That's no use. You can't never fit in as many plants <laughs> as you need for a whole uh, season or month or wherever um, in a bed where you sow the plants with uh, 10 centimeters apart. Don't do it. So I simply put the seeds in my hand and I spread the fingers and I sprinkle the seeds all over the surface. And then what I do now when it's time to harvest and uh, this is a sowing that I, I think I made it in, um, uh, in August this year, in the beginning or in the end of August, I don't remember actually. And it doesn't matter, it should be this big, um, no matter what. So uh, what I do now when it is like grown up is that I, um, I harvest the plants in between each other. I will show you what I mean. So you see, they, they grow quite thick uh, in a green, like a carpet. So instead of picking it from, from the outer sides and in, I just do like this. And this will give more space to the plants left in the bed. And this is, as I said, a cool hardy plant that will stand long in the ground. So even though I don't harvest all of it before it comes like snow, the plants will stay in the ground. Some of them will be damaged, of course, but most of them will survive without any damages. And then I can keep harvesting let's say in February, March and <laughs> so this is actually amazing. Um, there are a few cold hardy plants that you can grow in Sweden. Of course we have the, um, the kale for example, but you know uh, kale if it's green or black or purple or whatever, has a very special taste. And I would say that kale is very uh, kale <laughs> And some, in some, like dishes and some well it's not like it's not like suitable it, it doesn't suit on a sandwich for example or if you want to make a salad bowl maybe maybe for the kids this is just perfect so i think for me when i try to plan my garden uh, where i want to eat from the garden each and every day I want to go out in my garden and pick something to eat uh, and I want to be able to do that uh, every day year round even though it's winter in Sweden then I have to have uh, many different ve vegetables I can't just go for one vegetable I can't rely only on the kale or whatever and this is so easy to grow the corn salad I think everyone should grow it in a climate like this. Right. So you see, <laughs> I picked this <laughs> and I still have this left. <laughs> Oops. My hand 
things are wet and dirty so it's not easy to press on the right place well 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 um, there are a few uh, ways actually to harvest uh, the, the corn salad and if you are new to <laughs> to this live stream it is very cold this is Sweden and I have been sitting indoors in my sort of office writing on my next book uh, by the fire so it's very cozy uh, and I didn't expect this uh, wet and cold weather when I was just jumping out of the door to go get some greens for my um, lunch well I show you I pick the whole plant right and most often I don't bother to do anything with it except um, oh, what is that word I, I, I put it in a, um, well in water so that the dirt comes off and most often I eat the root as well it tastes exactly the same as the leaves if you only want to have like a few leaves on a sandwich or whatever you can pick them leaf by leaf and then leave the rest of the plant standing in ground and you can actually do a third thing when harvesting Let's try to see if I can find a good plant to show you no I think they are still too young but in plants that are a bit bigger they will have not like a stem but they will form like new plants um, here so you can pinch off the bigger plant and then simply uh, leave the plant in the ground so that the new sprouts will start growing so then you will have great use for uh, the plant even if it's in the ground and you harvested some um, this corn salad is good to grow in many different places I think as you see I grow it outdoor in the open here in Sweden uh, we expect a cold winter and I have had the corn salad outdoors in the garden even though it's like 30 minus degrees Celsius it's very cold and they will stand under a layer of snow because it is like insulated um, so they will be very fresh also when snow melts and uh, when it's milder weather outside but for now I think for me and for the family it is very good to have this combination with the, uh, like the stored vegetables that we have we have uh, three freezers um, we also have a lot of meat of course we do not hunt or have our own animals but we buy lamb uh, and uh, pig for local farmers uh, for example but then we have a lot of vegetables too in the freezers but if I combine let's say corn fresh corn um, in from the freezer uh, and I can put that on the table along with a bowl of corn salad uh, the um, uh, well the carrots from the garden the leaf from the beetroot etc something fresh right then it will be a perfect mix that makes it easier also to eat from the um, stored vegetables for a long time um, I actually got a bit sad when I arrived to work this day I will move <laughs> forward um, because everything looks oh my god it's so boring it looks boring everything is just uh, miserable colors in some ways and I started to count you know the month before it will be spring again and when I can go out with a lot of energy and you know looking forward to a new season uh, it is November now and what happens in November in Sweden is that the light is so bad so you can't really grow that many vegetables outdoors a few of them still uh, grows like the corn salad um, when I have um, um, bigger plants of um, oh my god miners is it miners lettuce 
I simply forgot. Um, well, there's an ama amazing uh, leafy green anyhow uh, that will keep growing even if the light is not that good. But most of the other vegetables, they, they crave this light uh, to be able to survive and produce new leaves. And it's not happening in Sweden um, because the combination of uh, well less light and also the cold, of course. So it's very difficult to grow uh, vegetables in Sweden wintertime. In other parts of the world, it may be cold, but you still have the light. And then you have like endless of possibilities because it is actually possible to heat up um, like places. But it's not possible for me to, to put a grow light <laughs> out in the main kitchen garden or even to light up my whole um, um, greenhouse. So you have to be very careful in what kind of vegetables you grow in Sweden. And uh, when people ask me uh, about how to, how to harvest in, in winter, I say that you have to choose very careful what kind of vegetables you grow, when you sow them and where you sow them. Because you can actually also in big parts of Sweden grow vegetables to harvest all winter long if you choose the right ones. So <laughs> by this I am going to go indoors with my vegetables and have a nice lunch uh, and hopefully warm up a bit by the fire and then writing on my next book. It's a bit tricky to talk about the books, I think, because it is not possible for you to read them in English yet. I have been saying yet for a couple of years now, but they may never be translated. I don't know. Until then, uh, I hope you visit my blog at sarabakmo.com to follow me in my everyday life in the garden and read about the vegetables. In uh, a few months time, we also release um, a membership content at the website uh, for you who want to follow me more like intense uh, in the gardens and have lots of tips about different vegetables uh, and also about the methods I use to to be able to harvest this many vegetables in my garden. And if you are interested in knitting, keep an eye uh, on my YouTube channel for knitting patterns that we are trying to uh, to to publish in just a short time. Thank you for watching. I am going now to go indoors to have this lunch with fried cheese and the corn salad and uh, fermented beetroots and a sandwich. Oh, shaking. <laughs> See you soon again, I hope. Bye bye. <laughs>